Let's talk about Wudong. Wudong arts, Wudong kung fu, and who better to ask than a Taoist priest from Wudong Mountain. Welcome back to Taoist Gate Talks. My name is Rick Johansson, and we're here, as always, with Master Zhou Xuan Yun. Hey, uh, yeah. And Henry Lee. Hey. And today we're talking about Wudong, Wudong Kung Fu. So the first question is, what is Wudong Kung Fu? Um, okay, so when we talk about Wudong Kung Fu, the first thing that comes to mind is the legendary figure called Zhang Sanfeng. Okay, so whenever you mention the words uh, internal martial arts, so-called Nei Jia Cheng, the first thing that's going to come to mind uh, for your uh, average Chinese person is going to be, oh, uh, you're talking about like uh, Zhang Sanfeng and his arts, right? So mm-hmm. So, first and foremost, let's talk about the man himself. So, uh, Zhang Sanfeng was uh, most well associated with Wudang Mountain. Uh, he was a Wudang Mountain Taoist. Um, so, as the legend goes, is that during his times of religious studies and self reflections, he observed on Wudang Mountain the battle between a, a snake and a bird. So, watching the two of them fight. And he drew inspiration from watching the, the two fighting with each other, and supposedly from that was um, born the art of Tai Chi. You know, he got those ideas and said, hey, if I borrow this move from him, the snake, this move from the bird, and eventually that art became known as Tai Chi Chen. Hmm. Uh, Okay. So in, in the original tale, we have the battle of the, uh, uh, the snake and the bird, as we just mentioned. But as time went on, they kind of evolved that into the idea of the snake being representative of a dragon. You know, it's a, it's a reptile, has that um, long body, so this becomes a dragon. And then the, uh, the bird uh, became thought of as a tiger instead. So we hear it in legend of how there's this uh, interplay and this battle between the tiger and the dragon. And so uh, another way this gets reflected in the Taoist arts, the Taoist uh, um, ideology and thought is that, you know, the, bo- the essence of the body is thought of as the so-called dragon. The chi is thought of as the tiger. So there's always a constant interplay, constant battle and uh, intertwining nature of dragon and tiger. So Okay. So the thing that sort of differentiates Wudong martial arts versus, say, any other martial arts is the idea that you're specifically practicing internal aspects of the body. So rather than, you know, working the muscles or something like that, we're thinking about how to develop the, the essence of the body, the chi of the body, and how to properly coordinate and develop that those internal mixtures that, once again, that dragon and tiger interplay. Okay, 
Okay. And then this evolves into the what we had discussed in previous episodes about yin and yang. Mm. So the idea of, um, you know, how do we make yin and yang interact in our bodies? How do we control that? And then this concept gets further extended into the ideas of combat. So yin and yang interplay, you know, one combatant versus the other. How do you interplay these forces of uh, perhaps their yang energy approaching your yin or vice versa? 所以其实呢，在这个特别在中国，大家一讲到啊，这个形意八卦太极，因为这个呢，形意和八卦太极啊，它都是讲究这个练气，都是讲究养生。所以大家一讲究这个内家拳，这个练呃练这个呃这个这个气养呃养生，他都会想到这个武当山。所以很多人说哦，这个太极形意八卦都是武当山出来的。OK OK。So what happens from there is any of the arts that has this discussion of internal forces, the qi, the s, and so on and so forth. So we're talking about arts such as tai chi, ba gua, xing yi. They all have this within their theoretical practices for their art. Ergo, because we have uh, this、uh, legend of Zhang Sanfeng originally coming from Wu Dong style, anything that has that theoretical basis is considered a Wu Dong art. Well, because I mean, we practice every day.、Um, you know the classes we have: kung fu class and tai chi、yep. class.、Mm-hmm. So we know it's real. We feel it, and I can feel the interplay when I'm practicing, and I'm sure we all can. Sure, sure, sure.、Um, so, but I know that some people do think that Wu Dong arts are legendary, like you're talking about from these these、uh, figures from the past. So, where did where did that go from legend to reality? Oh, okay. Just ah, ah, 那个这个这个问题呢，就是说怎么说呢？因为在在以前呢，那个道士啊，他教人的话，他并不是说谁都教，他是说你和他有缘分了，你和他关系很好了，你就是他的徒弟，嗯，就是他在教你。你不然的话，不认识的话，他是不会教你说他，他就啊，我什么都不知道。所以他们很保守，很保守。哦，在古代的时候。So first and foremost,、uh, you know, it wasn't exactly like there was just an open school with a big sign that says "Taking <laughs> Students on Wu Dong Mountain." You know, originally it was that perhaps you would encounter a Taoist priest, and if you happen to have a good relationship with them, you know, you met them. They said, "Oh,、um, you know, I've talked to you. I have a good relationship with you. Clearly, you and I have an intermingled destiny of sorts. So in that regard, I will teach you my martial arts." So in that sense, that's where we kind of get this more legendary con. Conception of Wu Dong style, you know, it's not once again there wasn't some school you could just pay tuition for. 嗯，所以呢，就是说，在这个文化大革命，就是这个 Cultural Revolution 的时候，那地方那个道士好像只有几个道人呢，只有在，呃，可能十多位道人吧，嗯，留下来了。可能就是说，很多道人都走了，就有的结婚了，就所以说，因为都走掉了，所以说这个时候呢，就是说，有功夫的道人肯定也不会留在那个地方，对吧？所以说，这道人都。都走了，所以说，哎，这武术基本上是都断掉了。对对对。啊，嗯。So and especially、um, if we look at recent,、uh, more modern history with the Cultural Revolution of、uh, you know the 1960s era,、um, that especially、um, just for a brief history of Cultural Revolution, it was essentially China's way of saying let's break away from old traditions. So in that particular time, knowing Kung Fu, you know one of the most traditional arts in China is especially a bad thing to know. So that just gave yet another reason for Taoists from Wudong Mountain to.、Uh, Sort of leave behind the old life.、Uh, I don't know kung fu. There's no reason to prosecute me.、嗯、so that became yet another big problem. Ah,、嗯、对，呃，所以呢，这个就就是这个这个这个是个问题。很多人都觉得这个，哎呀，这个武当山，因为很多人没见过武当山功夫，所以就觉得，哎，武当山根本就没有功夫。啊、呃，但是就是后来有的有金字套，就是我们讲了啊、呃，这个就是在这个金字套在这个陕西的时候。呃，做这个武术交流大会。Yes, yes, yes. 哎，他表演了一套这个拳，就是太极武行拳。对对对。嗯、um, ，So you know, just as as I mentioned, so you have the culture revolution. No Taoist is going to stick around at Wudong on、uh, Wudong Mountain. So in that sense, yeah, it's absolutely true. There are no martial arts to be、uh, learned from Wudong. But it's、uh, you know at one point, uh, Jin Zetao is 什么年的？呃，他应该是清朝的一个人。啊，哦，不是不是，他什么时候表演的？呃，他是在这个改革开放以后，文化大革命改革开放以后，应该在这个八十年代。八十年代。Okay, so what it was is during the eighties,、um, there was a large gathering of martial artists in Shanxi province, and there was sort of a, a, a martial arts exchange. You know, everyone show us your martial arts. Everyone、uh, demonstrate. And there was an individual named Jin Zetao. 
and he performed a form called Tai Yi Wu Xing Cheng, uh, uh, the Five Element Fist. And folks were asking him, oh my gosh, where did you learn this form? We've never seen it before. And he said, I learned it from a Taoist uh, monk, Taoist priest on Wudang Mountain. Mm-hmm.对啊,所以说这不能说是武道山没有功夫,所以说我们再回过来讲,就是武道山它本来就是一个修行的地方,就是我们讲就是有的人呢可能就本来这个人都有很好的功夫。哎,那他就是想到这个庙里面呢,就是说修行了,就是对万的这个神话不习惯,不习惯,都到庙里面做道人了。他们都会把这个功夫带到这个庙里面,带到这个武当山。Oh, okay. So, as uh, Jing Zetal demonstrated, there were, in fact, folks from Wudang Mountain, uh, Taoists um, that were there, because Wudang Mountain is a uh, famous Taoist site, a lot of mountains in uh, highly revered. Mm-hmm. So clearly what happened was is that you do have some Taoists. While there's no necessarily unified school, there were a lot of folks that they would go there to do their religious studies, self-reflections, and if they happen to also be capable in the internal martial arts, they'd be there as well, and uh, they would pass on their skills to those that they deemed worthy. Well, that takes us to the next question, because in 2012, um, Sifu actually took, well, he goes every year, but he took us, Henry and I got to go to the 600th anniversary of oh, Wudong yeah. Mountain, that and it, it was amazing just to see, to be a part of it, if you think about it, 600 years. Yeah. Um, and so we did get to see the buildings and, and the structure and, and the institution was there for 600 years. So, and then now you're saying in the 80s, the, after the, the um, Cultural Revolution, can you tell us about your experience of the recovery? Oh,就是那恢复,都是怎么样的? 哎,到武当山教给这些武当山的道士。哦,就是如果他们有这的武当内家权。啊,或者是有别的功夫无所谓了,只要就是说一个人念的比较好,把他们都叫到这个武当山去教这些武当山的一些新的道士。Okay, oh, so, you know, after the 80s with Ding Zetao, they said, oh man, oh wow, you know, there are arts from Wudang Mountain. Um, so clearly we lost a lot of the culture, we lost all the arts because of the cultural revolution. But after the 80s onwards, there was a big push to say, well, you know, our country, um, we've come out of this dark period of, uh, you know, the Great Leap Forward, Cultural Revolution, we have to recover our country. Uh, we have to recover our country's rich and storied history. So what happened was is that after there was that realization of Jin uh, Zetao, uh, they were saying, hey, let's try to get a lot of uh, martial artists to return to Wudang Mountain to teach their arts so that we can preserve these arts, because clearly there was a tradition of skillful uh, martial artists who taught at Wudong. Let's make this a site on which we can begin that recovery, um, preserve our cultural heritage, that is to say, the martial arts in this case. Uh, 政府把他们请过来的，请了很多不同的这种人到武当山教。Okay, oh, okay. uh, so then from that point forward, there was sort of a call out that was saying, "Hey, look, Wudong Mountain now is making call out for any skillful martial arts to come and be a teacher." Some of them were actually supported by the government. This was a big push by the Chinese government itself to say, "We want to recover the arts." So you have some that just hear it from the, uh, they just hear it from hearsay. Oh, well, I'm skillful in martial arts. Why not go to Wudong and uh, show them what I've got? And others were were found by government scouts to say, hey, you're pretty skillful, would you like to come to Wudang to teach? Yeah,这个后面,在这个后期的时候,有的武当山就是有的这个道人,学这个功夫在武当山住了,然后也到别的一些道观,就在这个全国呀,中国的这个全国各地啊,导致别的地方,哎,听说哪地方有好的师傅
，但是也有在就是说为了开武馆赚钱，或者为了已经做什么，也有一些新的东西。所以武当这个武术现在很杂，就很多很多，就是传统的也有一些新的，很多不同的东西。哦、oh, ，OK， so unlike the past where before we didn't have like an established school of wudang, because of this call out from the government, now it's actually almost an opposite situation. Now there's so many different schools at wudang. Some of them are in fact quite traditional.、Mm-hmm. But the other part being is because there was this call out from the government, folks are thinking, "Hey, maybe I have a chance to make some money." You know, this is becoming sort of kung fu capital. Why don't I go there? So now, if you go to Wudong, it's there's so many different arts. It's actually become quite a quite a mixed bag. Well, I was wondering about that because I know when we went, I did watch some of the lessons going on,、mm-hmm. and I wonder、um, how different is the Wudong arts being taught there in Wudong、oh. versus what we're learning. 呃，其实我练的这些功夫呢，我练的这些功夫，它也有的一些，其实也有的一些现代的后期编的，但有的和一些传统的。呃，你们也知道，就是说我当时我不拥有过很多地方嘛，我以前就是呃，就认识了很多的这种就是功夫 master， 就是很很好功夫的，就是我们做过交流。是。所以说，我的一些就是说。我现在在教你们的这个形式上，就是按照武当山的功夫形式在教，但是我教你们很多的东西，是我在外面学的这种经验。啊、uh, ，这种武术的一些动作的这种应用啊，这种想法，更多的经验是外面的。Okay, okay. So the way they do things over there and the way we do things here is that、um, part of Sufu's tradition of being a Taoist Dao- priest, Taoist monk, is、um, the so-called wandering phase, or you know, the、uh, you'll hear it in classic stories, the Taoist who wanders the land and、uh, learns the ways of the world. So Sufu, you know, he learned from one of the martial arts academy. Back when the there was established schools to say, hey, let's make an effort to restore the Wudang martial arts. So Sufu learned from the academies there,、um, particularly just the Sanfeng Pai, the so-called Sanfeng School. Sanfeng School, yeah.、Um, but a lot of things we do here is during his travels, because、mm-hmm. Sufu was also a martial arts master. Part of his wandering, the topics at hand was also, of course. Or、uh, making exchanges with other martial arts, saying, "Hey, here's some ideas. Here's what I learned. Do you ha- can you、uh, provide me some insights into your arts?"、Mm-hmm. So a lot of the stuff that we practice,、uh, theoretical practices, combative practices, so on and so forth, are derived from Sufu's own experience rather than strictly from what he learned from the temple.、Uh, from、uh, I'm sorry, the academy where he trained at. So he uses his academy training as our foundation, but then other concepts, other ideas, are derived from his experience. That's awesome, and that actually is all the time we have for today.、Oh, so,、right. but、uh, we want to thank you for watching.、Mm-hmm. And if you have questions for Master Zhou, you can ask them in the comments below. And we'll see you next time. Zai Jian, Zai Jian, Zai Jian. Henry, this episode did remind me of that trip to Wudong Mountain.、Mm-hmm. And if I recall, I remember watching you do a flip off the side of a temple. I, I got in trouble for that, you know. They didn't want the the security guard didn't want me to do it again. <laughs> well, who who has the footage of that? I think someone taped it. They did. Someone. I, I can't find it. If、Check、someone、looking. out there has the footage on Facebook or somewhere, please let us know. Yes. And、um, uh, just like to take this opportunity to thank everybody. This is actually the end of our first series of videos.、Um, but if you guys enjoyed this, please, you know, let us know in comments, whether it's on Facebook, Twitter. If there's any subject that you guys had interest in, in Taoism, classical texts, music, so on and so forth, please let us know, and we'll see what we can get to. And in the meantime. We hope everyone enjoyed this seri- video series. Bye for now.